Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lynette. And on behalf of the, the team, I want to thank you all for your time today. We really appreciate all the support that we receive from our advisors and the Dow team throughout this process. And we're here today to show you our last presentation for this project. And just as a reminder, uh, what we worked on, it was essentially assessing and analyzing Michigan crops uh, for sustainability initiatives. And so with that, just a quick intro for the team. Um, I am a graduate student. I'm doing a dual degree, an MBA, and a Master of Science in Environmental Science. And then I'll let the rest of the team introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay, and I'm in the School of Public Health studying nutrition. Hi, everyone. I'm Hannah, and I'm in the law school. Hi, my name is Rebecca, and I am in the Urban Planning School. Awesome. So yeah, our advisor for this project was Ravi, and our Dow consultant was Connie. Um, so with that, so we did work with the Nature Conservancy for this project, whose mission is to conserve the lands and, and waters on which all life depends. And we focus primarily on the climate change aspect of this project. Um, and we worked with Mary Fells and Ben Wickerman, um, who are our project leads from the Nature Conservancy. And so what brought this project to life? Um, essentially, as you all might be aware, there is a rising um, in, there is a rising consumer pressure to demand companies to uh, adopt more um, climate initiatives. And due to this um, pressure, the Nature Conservancy believes that there may be an opportunity to partner with consumer packaged goods companies sourcing from Michigan um, in efforts to improve their sustainability and soil health practices. And so to address this challenge, our team, um, our goal was to gain a strong understanding of the product flow of Michigan's crops that were coming directly from the Saginaw Bay watershed area. And um, to narrow down our scope, we initially looked at all crops, but it eventually narrowed down to four main crops due to their importance to the organization and also to the size of production within Michigan, that being corn, soy, edible dry beans, and potatoes. And to find more information about these crops, we use three main channels. That will be commodity groups, farm associations, and processors in the Saguna Bay watershed to collect some of the information that we're going to present to you today. And in our hopes to finalize and present some findings on conservation-based partnerships that the Nature Conservancy could consider um, for improving their soil health practices. So with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Lindsay to cover the methodology and the data, some of the challenges that we had as we were going through this process as well. OK, awesome. Thanks, Lynette. So once we figured out kind of the crops that we were going to focus on, right, that took a little bit of time in itself to figure out what to prioritize. But once we figured that out, we really spent, I don't know, like two or three months really just trying to figure out what of this information was available publicly versus privately. Um, so with the help of our advisor, Ravi, we were able to have conversations with PhD candidates as well as a couple people in the CPG industry um, just to ask them questions about, you know, where do we find this information? How do we approach asking people about this information? How sensitive is this information? And what can we offer in return in order to convince people to help give us this information? Um, so we discovered pretty quickly that most of this information was not available publicly um, and that we we're going to need to talk with people in the actual industries. So um, we also learned that asking for this kind of information, supply chain related information, was not going to be necessarily easy, that people wouldn't necessarily just hand it over to us like, here you go. Um, so that was a challenge in itself. So we had to figure out kind of how to approach that as well. Um, so first, like Lynette mentioned, we talked with um, a, a variety of groups, but we started with MSU extension experts um, in their like agricultural extension realm. And then we also talked with Michigan commodity groups. So the commodity groups, just so we're all on the same page, are basically the organizations that monitor crop prices, track agricultural production, um, and maintain just general records of like what's happening season to season in their various crops, and they happen per state. So for example, we talked to Michigan bean, Michigan corn, Michigan soybeans, and Michigan potatoes all separately. Um, so those conversations with the commodity groups led us to talk with processors, um, which serves basically as that middleman between um, the farmers and the growers and the wholesalers and the CPG companies. 
Um, so when we talk to processors, we ask them for information about the size of their company, how much they source from the Saginaw Bay watershed, as well as who they sell their goods to, so those wholesale wholesalers and CPG companies. Um, so like I mentioned, we had that kind of initial challenge of just finding this information publicly versus privately. Um, but I would say the biggest challenge that we faced was just kind of making those contacts with processors. Um, we really struggled to get responses from people to make this information appealing that they would want to participate. Um, we played a lot of email tag, um, a lot of no responses. Um, so we really had to kind of strategically figure out how we were going to give the Nature Conservancy the recommendations that they wanted and that we wanted to deliver from this project um, with the relationships that we were able to cultivate with processors and the commodity groups as well as um, just kind of targeting to we didn't get a lot of responses in some, some realms. Um, so another challenge that we faced was just kind of building that rapport in a really short period of time because this information was so sensitive and we were um, needed to go about it in a pretty strategic way. Um, it was challenging to kind of build that trust to gain this information, um, but we eventually were able to do it for the most part. So I'll turn it over now to Rebecca to go over our sustainability criteria um, that we used for our recommendations. Yeah, so once we gained this information um, and we had a list of CPGs and processors who we thought could potentially be good partners for TNC, we evaluated each of these um, potential partners based on a sustainability evaluation that we created. And we standardized this method so that we would be able to compare companies to one another. Um, and this criteria was based on um, the company's public facing sustainability goals that we could find on their website. Um, and also uh, team interactions that we had throughout the course of the year. Um, and you can see on the right, that's one example of one of the graphics we provide in our report um, for Better Made Snack Foods, one of the companies we recommend. Um, and as you can see, um, these are based on um, the degree of Saginaw Bay watershed presence um, economically, like how much they source from Saginaw Bay watershed, um, the willingness of the company to collaborate with us, um, the existing public facing sustainability goals that we can access on their website with an emphasis on goals surrounding soil health, um, public facing corporate social responsibility and environmental social governance reporting. Um, we emphasize companies that regularly updated um, these documents. Um, and finally, influence in the region more socially, like how they interact with the community, who they employ, um, stuff like that. Um, and I'm gonna transition into talking about some of our findings and key takeaways. So um, ultimately, we were able to provide TNC with 11 recommendations for processors and CPG companies that we believe would be opening, open to developing sustainability partnerships. And our hope is that over the coming months, um, TNC will be able to reach out to these companies and work with them and nurture these relationships. Um, our CPG recommendations will be followed up by TNC um, as they do this, and TNC plans to do similar research for other crops in Michigan. So we hope that our process can inform their process later on. And Hannah's going to talk about that. Yeah, so in addition to the partnership recommendations that we were able to make and identify actual players that TNC could partner with, we also want to make some recommendations about process given that TNC does want to repeat this uh, type of research. Um, so the first thing that we wanted to recommend to TNC is to begin by talking with agricultural groups um, this was something that we found really foundational in our research. It really helps to lay the groundwork. It helps to identify the key players and understand kind of the, all of the actors in the supply chain from growers to the final CPG companies. Second, we recommend that TNC begin by talking to CPG companies before processors. One of the main issues, as you've heard, that we've run into is this sort of information barrier. Um, oftentimes, processors were not willing to talk with us, even if we were willing to sign a non-disclosure agreement or even try to purchase that data, just because that customer information is so sensitive. So by starting at the CPG, um, there might actually be a little bit more autonomy to give over that information to TNC. Um, third, we have the idea of potentially starting and tracking non-GMO crops, um, given how they have to be labeled in final products. Um, there is such granular information on how they're grown and how they're sourced and how they move up through the supply chains. Um, our fourth and fifth recommendations are all about kind of building and leveraging that network. As you've heard again and again, um, 
issues of buy-in and of really trying to get people to understand the mutually beneficial agreement um, was one of the main challenges that we faced. Um, and then finally, our sixth one is just recommend a, sort of a creative one, recommending um, different mechanisms for data sharing and supply chain transparency to again sort of help um, TNC build those build those networks. Um, so thank you all so much for listening, and thank you to the Dow Fellows Program. We had a really wonderful experience, and we welcome your questions and discussion. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, we now have time for a few questions from the audience. So please, thoughts, feedback, questions for this group? And as you're answering questions, if you step up to the podium, right. then they, everybody can hear you. Thanks. I have one question. So you mentioned um, DMO tracking. Um, and I was curious if you found that because of the regulations around GMOs, if they provided an easier um, perhaps set of data to track um, that would be more publicly accessible compared to non-GMO. Yeah, so I think that they would. Um, we ended up not tracking non-GMO crops, but it was something that was raised in one of our later conversations with a processor that, um, at least for soybeans, the non-GMO crops go through an entirely different channel and are much more kind of tracked um, so that you can follow them out. So ultimately, we kind of got to that information late in the process, so we didn't end up doing the non-GMO tracking, but I think it would be something that would be more publicly accessible or at least just easier to kind of get the, the type of granular level data that TNC might want. Hold on, okay. Alex, will you repeat that in the microphone for the benefit <laughs> of the folks Sure, I just asked if you could um, talk a little bit more about your sustainability evaluation process. Thanks. Yeah, so we ended up doing it for the 11 companies that we recommended, and we did this um, in order to kind of rank these companies within each crop. So the way our report is set up is each crop has like a main recommendation, like our number one company that we recommend. For example, for potatoes, we recommended Better Made Snack Foods because um, of their willingness to collaborate and like just their influence. And the way that Michigan potato crops are set up um, it just made more sense. So we did it to rank them within each crop, um, but also we did it so that we could rank them across the crops as well and have like a top um, one that's most important um, overall. Um, but yeah, these are like the main, these five categories are the main headings, but we had like sub bullets that got more into depth in the report about what we've more specifically looked at um, for each company. Thanks for your presentation, guys. That was really interesting. Um, when you were talking to the different processors and CPGs, and there were some barriers and some issues, were there any strategies that you found most helpful in kind of overcoming those in terms of, I don't know, like thinking about the psychology of how you approach those conversations? Were there any things you found really helpful or other things that you found really challenging? I can take this one. So. Um, Basically, our strategy was we offered to like share our public facing Dow report with people at the end, and that was kind of like the carrot on the stick, right? To get people to um, be involved. Another tactic that like didn't happen really on purpose, but with a few of the bean processors that I interviewed, um, if I talked to them like over the phone or on Zoom, they were like much more hesitant to give me that information and. I think so having that like introduction period and then I would like follow up with them over email and ask them again through like a, a paper survey, like a Google Doc survey, um, they were willing to like share that information and were happy to do it then. So I think a little bit of just like strategically building the rapport over time and not like demanding the information right away was helpful. Also challenging given like the time constraints, but yeah, those two I found to be the most helpful. Wonderful. Oh, go ahead. 
And I'll just add, in my experience with the corn, um, when we developed the inter when we developed the interview guide, uh, we did have a prompt at the beginning that kind of set the foundation for, hey, this interview is whatever you want to share and whatever you feel comfortable. If there's any information that you would like for us to redact, we can, we're happy to do so. So I think setting up the the boundaries at the beginning of like, this is just going to be between us and this information will be protected sometimes helped in easing some of those concerns about data um, sensitivity. And then also another thing that was very challenging was getting people to answer emails. And it just came a point that I, we were just like, should we just grab the phone and call? And that ended up sometimes working out for some of the interviews that we had. Sometimes old fashioned techniques. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Great. Well, please join me in another.